Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to create a vertical navigation menu using a background image. Uh, I've already got a video out there for doing a horizontal menu, and uh, recently created one, a vertical menu with active indicator. So it's kind of a little spin-off of those. Vertical navigation menu with a background image. And the background image that I'm going to be using here is this graphic right here. It's a two-state image. Um, I'm going to have it display, I guess, the the red menu item for the you know at, at the uh, in the original state and then when a user hovers over I'll have it change over to that green image so this is one image with two portions notice the dimensions of this image are 200 by 64 that means each individual graphic is 200 by 32 so we'll just kind of make a mental note of that 200 by 32 and I'm gonna jump over to my HTML editor I've opened up a blank HTML template, XHTML 1.0 strict template. Let me go ahead and change this to a vertical menu. And I think instead of using uh, external style sheet, I'm going to use some embedded styles today. So let me just get rid of that link tag and I'm going to do a style tag. Of course, the embedded or internal styles is not as really efficient for a website as an external style sheet, but since I'm just doing one page here, this will be plenty fine. And I'm going to go ahead and start off my style sheet, even though I haven't really done anything in the web page. I'm going to go ahead and start this off with a wildcard selector. And I'm going to do uh, margin 0px and padding 0px. Take care of all of that. And let's scroll down and let's check out. In the body section, all I have is a headline one. Let me change this to uh, vertical menu with background image. And now I'm going to start to create a basic menu here. I'm going to put this in a div. And I could uniquely identify this div, but I, um, or I could uniquely identify the menu, the unordered list that really is the menu. So a couple ways of going about it. And I think in my other video I show identifying the div. So this time I'll do it a little different. I'll go ahead and put in my unordered list. I will uniquely identify it as nav menu one. There we go. And let me go ahead and put a few uh, list items in here. We'll just do a little dummy one. Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to repeat that a few times. And I'm just going to change the text here a little bit. So we have various links. Okay, so there is my hyperlinked navigation menu. Okay, so nav menu one, it's got four list items. And if I check this out in my browser right now, that's what it looks like. So I've got my items over here. This is a bulleted list, even though you can't see the bullets. My bullets are off the screen. But since I use that margin zero, padding zero for all properties, you just don't really see them over there. But I do have that menu. And just to make it a little bit easier for us, so you can really see that we have that menu, let me jump back over to my HTML. And I do have this div here. Let me take care of this for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and call this menu container and let's do a little style here for a moment menu container and I'm going to make it 300 pixels wide margin 20 pixels and auto okay basically it means it's gonna have 20 pixel margin on the top and the bottom and automatic margins on the left and the right and just so we can really see what this is going to do, let's put a border, four picks, solid red. And you're going to see that this menu, this menu container actually, is going to get centered on the page. Let me save this, back to the browser, and refresh. There we go. So now we can see that my div is centered on the page, and now you can see why we couldn't see those bullets before. So my unordered list is within this red border div. The div is centered on the page by doing an automatic margin on the left, automatic margin on the right. Now let's get to work on that unordered list. So a couple things I'm going to take care of here. My unordered list is uniquely identified as nav menu one, so let me create a rule for that. And I'm actually going to put in UL pound sign 
nav menu one. Putting the UL here is not essential, not necessary, but I'm going to do that just as a reminder to you and to me that nav menu one is an unordered list as opposed to an OL or a table or something like that, or a div even. Okay, so it's just a little reminder of the element that's being used. Nav menu one is an unordered list, and I'm going to do a list style type none. That's going to get rid of the bullets right there, okay? So unordered list, list style type none. Refresh. There we go. Bullets are gone. Now let's do a little bit of work on the actual list items within this unordered list. Unordered list, nav menu one space li. I want to manipulate, scroll here a little bit, I want to manipulate the list items that are within my nav menu one. Okay, a couple things I'm going to do here. I'm going to set their width to 200 pixels and their height to 32 pixels. Now, do you remember where I'm getting those measurements from? 200 by 32. My image that I'm working with is 200 by 64. Yet I only want to work with half of an image at the time. So if I just want to work with, let's say, the top half, I'm going to work with 200 by 32. So that's where I'm getting that width and the height, 200 by 32. Now let's also take care of this. The anchor tags that are within the list items. Unordered list, nav menu one, list item space anchor. Okay, so now I am manipulating the anchor tags that are within the list item that are within my navigation menu unordered list. So I'm reading this from right to left. My anchor tags are inline elements, but I'm going to display them as block elements. I'm going to set their width to 200 pixels and their height to, to uh, 32 pixels. I'm also going to use a background image. Okay, The background image is going to be the image that I'm messing around with. Okay, It's my menu12.gif image. Okay, So menu12.gif takes care of that. Now let's see what we have now. I'm going to save this, jump over to the browser, and refresh. There we go. So you can just kind of make this out. There's my uh, there's my navigation menu. Now to make this a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to put some spacing in here. So let me jump over to my list items and I'm going to put a little bit of margin on each of these. How about five pixels? There we go. So now it's a little bit clearer. And now that we can start to see how the navigation menu is going to function, and notice that I can click on any of these, and they're all independent hyperlinks now. But let's see if I can't work on this text a little bit. Notice that my text is pushed up into the top left corner of the block. In this case, the block is the anchor tag. And you just have to kind of pretend that this anchor tag is now a rectangle shape, 200 wide by 32 tall. And the text is simply within that rectangle shape. But I'm going to get that text in the center here. So I'm going to go to my anchor tags, and I'm going to do a uh, text align center. That's going to give it centered horizontally. And for vertical center, I'm going to do a line height that's 32 pixels, the same height as the, as the anchor tag itself. Anchor tag is 32 pixels tall. Line height is 32 pixels. And let's go ahead and do a little refresh here. There we go. So now my text is in the center. Something else I can take, uh, take care of here. I'll go ahead and do a text decoration none to get rid of those uh, underlines. And there, now I have my text on that menu. So that part's pretty easy. Now, next order of business is to get this hover effect working. Okay, so I want to get the hover going. So let's uh, jump down here, and I'm going to create another rule. Okay, this one's going to be unordered list, nav, menu one, list items, a colon, hover. Okay, so let's look at this. I want to manipulate now the hover version of hyperlinks within the list items within my nav menu one. A colon hover is a pseudo class selector. Okay, so it's a specialized version of the anchor type selector. So on hover, I want to reposition the background image. Now my background image has already been set for my basic anchor tag. Background image is the menu 12 GIF. But I'm going to change the position of that background image. So I'm going to use the background 
position property. Now for the background position property, um, there's two units of measurements that I'm going to use here. I'm going to go 0 px and negative 32 px. Basically the 0 px is the left to right positioning and I'm sorry, yeah, the 0 px is the left to right or the first number is the left to right and the second number is the up and down positioning. So let's look at my image for a moment. I don't want to reposition this image left or right. I'm using the same 200 pixels of width. So that's why I'm using zero pixels of measurement for left to right. But I do want to push this image up. Right now I'm looking at the top portion of the image, the one with the red line. Okay. Let's go back to the browser. There it is. So I'm looking at the top portion of the image with the red line. Now I want to hover it. I'm sorry, I want to reposition that background image upward so that I'm looking at the lower portion of this image. So whenever you want to move a background image up, then you're going to use a negative unit of measurement, so negative 32 pixels. Let's finish that off. Save, Alt-Tab, Refresh. So now when I hover over, there we go. So don't fall for the illusion here. It's not that the little red line is changing to green, it's that the background image is repositioning itself extremely fast. So the entire gray rectangle is being changed really. And that's our basic vertical navigation menu using a background image.